Hello, this is Psych, and welcome back to my channel. Measurement validity is one of the most important concepts in educational and psychological testing. And in fact, it's also, unfortunately, one of the most misunderstood concepts. So I'm, I'm going to start a new series where I will discuss uh, construct validity, and I'm going to focus in particular on the views of Sam Mezik. Um, but before I get to those details, the first thing that I would like to do is actually introduce the concept of validity by focusing on its history with an educational and psychological testing. In the early 1900s, Carl Pearson formalized the correlation coefficient, which was originally based off of the work of Sir Francis Galton, who was a cousin of Charles Darwin. Correlations can be used for multiple purposes, such as prediction, and it was really this view that informed measurement validity prior to the 1950s. Tests are often used for t prediction and selection purposes. A criterion variable is the thing that I'm ultimately interested in. So to provide a simple example, I may be interested in student retention as, let's say, my criterion of ultimate interest. The extent to which a test, say test A, predicts retention is therefore the primary question from what we would consider to be a criterion related view or perspective toward validity. Perhaps test A does, let's say, a moderate job of predicting retention in a particular situation, such as maybe for four-year universities, but maybe it doesn't do a great job at predicting retention at a two-year um, college. So still even under this view we would say well validity depends upon the purpose and the use of a test under a criterion based view i'm solely interested in the relationship between my test scores and some criterion like i said some criterion of ultimate interest criterion variables typically are something like job performance maybe school performance, and so forth. So, under this initial view, our early views, the validity of a test is really just an estimate of the correlation between the raw test scores and the true criterion scores. So what about test content? Uh, during this time, the issue or issues relevant to the content of a test also became a popular issue, basically a popular topic to discuss uh, more specifically with respect to, um, let's say, educational tests. So let's think about a situation in which a teacher is um, teaching math to a group of students in the classroom. She has taught the students how to add, how to subtract, let's say positive whole numbers, and the teacher is planning to administer some kind of test in order to determine, you know, what the, what the students know. So what kinds of questions could the teacher put on this test? Well, there's going to exist, at least theoretically, this kind of universe of all possible questions that could be posed. In this case, that universe would consist of all possible combinations of, let's say, addition and subtraction problems from the content that the students have been, have been taught. The set of possible items is referred to as a content domain. And the questions that the teacher decides to use on the test constitute a sample of the possible questions that could have been used from this content domain. Now, given this situation, there are a couple questions that we could ask. 
does my content on the test represent this theoretical domain of possible content? Maybe, for example, I'm missing something important. The other question that we could pose、um, would be about the relevance of my content, right? Maybe I'm asking irrelevant content or content that the students have not been taught. So these are the kinds of questions. Whenever we're talking about content validity, we're typically interested in the extent to which my items or my questions represent this kind of theoretical universe of possibilities, as well as the relevance of my items. We don't want we want our items to be representative. And we also want the items to be relevant, right? We don't want to include irrelevant content. So, in 1955, Kronbach and Mill published a seminal paper on construct validity. In fact, I have a whole presentation just about that paper. And they argued that there are many situations in which we do not have a clear content domain from which to sample items, and there there are also these situations in which we do not have a clear criterion variable of ultimate interest. And in fact, this is the situation that we tend to find ourselves in in psychology and education many, much of the time. Let's say. And specifically, they were really talking about psychology. So let's consider depression. When I think about depression, do I have a clear content domain? This kind of theoretical universe of possible questions that we could ask with respect to depression, just as we did with the math example. Well, in, in this case, it is not so clear. What about a criterion variable of ultimate interest,、uh, similar to what we had with respect to retention, or a job performance as a criterion of ultimate interest? Well, when we think about depression, well, that's also not so clear that we have this criterion of ultimate interest. So, what do we do in these situations? And Kronbach and Mill basically said, well, we're interested in Construct validity. So, what is a construct? So, according to Kronbach and Mill, a construct is some postulated attribute of people that's assumed to be reflected in test performance. And validation then consists of basically examining the extent to which educational and psychological constructs. Can account for the variation that we see in, let's say, student performance. So validity is no longer—it's not really this property of a test, but instead it's a characteristic. It's—it's it's, it's a property of my inferences about the scores. So the existence of, let's say, a construct is not something that we can directly observe. In fact, I'm at best able to get these kinds of indirect indications about the construct from what people say on, let's say, a survey, how they perform on some kind of test, and so forth.、Um, and ideally, especially within this 1955、um, article, we would place constructs within what is referred to. As a nomological network, and it's basically this kind of theoretical ne network of kind of observations, other theoretical constructs, and so forth.、Um, and we're going to place it within this kind of network of relationships to get a better understanding of what we mean by certain terms. And to be honest, the the concept of a nomological network is quite complicated and could actually. Take up an entire video of itself, but that was the basic ideas of Kronbach and Mill, and their 1955 paper. So the birth of construct validity in 1955, the early 1950s, 
led to what is referred to as the three C's of validity theory. So validity was said to have three distinct types, criterion, content, and construct. But beginning in roughly the 1970s and throughout the 90s, really mainly in the late 80s and 90s, there was a push to unify validity theory. And Sam Mezik was arguably the theorist who was primarily responsible, who was the main person really um, pushing for the unification of validity theory. Mezik was concerned about meaning. What do the scores mean? How does theory, evidence, and so forth inform the meaning of her scores? And he argued through a series of multiple papers and so forth that um, anything that contributes to the meaning of the score is ultimately concerned about construct validity. So since criterion relationships and the content of, let's say, a test informs the meaning of my scores, it's really concerned about construct validity. Moreover, uh, Mezik also included consequences as an aspect of construct validity. Um, in his view, which I'm going to make other videos that really dive into these topics, um, but in his view, um, the consequences of testing, the consequences of our interpretation of the scores, how we use the scores, also contribute to the meaning that we can derive about these scores and so forth. Um, and it was for some of these reasons that he said that the consequences of testing are an essential. It's, a, it's an important part of what we think about when we're thinking about construct validity. Much of our current understanding of um, validity theory really stems from this work that was conducted by Sam Mezik and also more recently the views of Michael Caine. Uh, Michael Caine has taken um, what we can think of as really this argument-based approach to the validation process. So when we think about validity and the validation procedures that we would use, Validation is really this process of constructing arguments um, about how to interpret the scores, how I want to use the scores, and so forth. And validation is really the, um, not just constructing those arguments, but then using evidence and theory to evaluate the quality of, of those arguments. And he was also quite influential in writing the most recent, helping to 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 write the most recent uh, standards for educational and psychological testing. So I'm going to use that to end this video with um, how, how, you know, a brief discussion of how the standards would talk about uh, validity. So validity, according to the standards, is the degree to which evidence and, and theory support the interpretation, um, the interpretations of the test scores for proposed uses of a test. Um, so validity is this unified kind of concept. And instead of talking about different types of validity, instead the standards really, the standards talk about these different sources of validity evidence. So the first source of validity evidence pertains to test content, which I've already talked about. The second source pertains to response processes. So what kinds of cognitive processes might a person use when they're responding to a question, let's say on a test of some kind. The third is internal structure. Um, this is basically the extent to which my, um, the relationships, let's say that exist among my items or the test questions reflect what we think about the construct uh, we usually do things like a factor analysis uh, to look at these types of questions. The fourth source of evidence 
um, is relations to other variables. So we would look at things like convergent and discriminant uh, relationships. Consequences are also considered to be a source of validity evidence. So in sum, contemporary validity theory, at least in large part, would agree with the following points. That validity is a unified concept. We no longer talk about different types of validity. My interpretations, number two, my interpretations and uses, let's say, of a test are more or less valid. So validity is not this kind of all or nothing concept. Um, validity is number three, a property of my interpretations and uses. So it's inappropriate technically to say, at least in any kind of unqualified sense, that a test is valid. My interpretations about the scores or the way that I'm using the scores are more or less valid given the evidence and theory that we have. Lastly, validation is an ongoing process. We're never really done. Evidence can be misleading. Theory, we can get things wrong. Um, so validation is an ongoing process. Really, we're always looking to improve um, the quality of our interpretations and uses and so forth. And we're never, like I said, we're never really done. So thank you for your time. And like I said, I'm going to introduce a new series. Uh, well, this is the beginning of a new series about validity theory. So thank you if you made it this far.